So today we'd like to talk about wavelength and frequency. We just did a lab on these two and now we want to formally put all the things we learned and maybe a little bit more into our notes. Okay, so wavelength and frequency. I want to start out by making, you under, making sure you understand where they both come from. Frequency comes from the source that is producing the wave, be it a tuning fork or be it something that is producing light. The frequency is source dependent. Okay, so the tuning fork will have a certain frequency. Remember, frequency is measured in hertz. So maybe that tuning fork will oscillate 250 times every second. That is what we call frequency, determined by the source. Wavelength, on the other hand, is the distance measured in meters between two adjacent waves. Wavelength goes by the Greek letter lambda. Again, it's measured in meters and it's measured for sound, high pressure to high pressure. The nearest high pressure to the other nearest high pressure. You wanna make sure they are adjacent waves. You don't wanna measure high pressure to high pressure and skip over some. So they have to be adjacent like regions of your wave. Okay, so there are our two variables we're looking at. Frequency, measured in hertz, caused by the source, the wavelength, the distance between adjacent waves. How are they connected? Well, in lab we messed around with frequency, so let's take a look. In the first example, I'm gonna modestly create a frequency. I then have my wave created with that exact same frequency, and when I'm done, I'm going to pause it. You'll notice that the waves are pretty far apart, almost 100 meters. Now I'm going to make the waves happen much quicker. I clicked with a much higher frequency. You'll now notice that the waves are only about 40 meters apart. So side by side, this was when the frequency was low, and this was when the frequency was high. You'll notice the same amount of time went by, about 3.2 seconds. You'll notice that when the frequency was low, the waves are far apart. You'll notice that when the frequency is high, the waves are closer together. The wavelength will be lower. So we can see an inverse-like relationship. As frequency gets higher, the waves get closer together. Why is this happening? Hopefully you can see that when I have a modest frequency, there's a lot of time in between waves. So the waves have a lot of time to get away from the next wave that's on its way. However, when I make the frequency a larger number, there's less time in between waves which means they are not able to get as far apart. All right, so that is our connection. When we graphed it out, we saw it was a perfect inverse graph. Again, Y is wavelength. The X is frequency. So higher frequencies, smaller wavelengths. Double the frequency, you cut the wavelength in half. <coughs> This graph constant, in this case 200, has physical significance that we'll talk about in just a minute. It will not always be 200, but it will be some constant that has importance to our situation. And it turns out that that constant is dependent upon how quickly the wave moves through the material in question. So we're gonna do a high speed, and then we're gonna do a slow speed. So there's the high speed, and here's the low speed. You'll notice I let them run for each about 2.99 seconds. You'll notice that they each made three waves, so they have the exact same frequency, but you'll notice here the wavelength is much bigger than it is here. This time it's not a question of frequency, it's a question of speed. In the first case, the waves are moving pretty fast, so they can get pretty far apart. 
In the next case, we're producing the waves at the same rate, but since they're moving slower, they can't travel very far before the next wave is created. Okay, when we graph this out, we notice that we get a proportional relationship. And this time our wavelength is on the y and our velocity is on the x. Again, we get a graph constant and this graph constant this time depends on the frequency. So if we were to put these two together, we have our frequency caused by the oscillating source. The waves are going to move at a certain speed, which is determined by the type of wave and what it's traveling through. And finally, we have the wavelength. We saw in the first part an inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency. This graph constant turns out to be the velocity of the wave. So our final formula looks like that. It shows you how the two independent variables frequency and velocity determine the wavelength of the wave. I'd like you to show me that you can figure out these things. So if you go on to our site, you'll get a single problem. Each person will get a unique problem. And you just start it up and waves will be coming out. I would suggest pausing it at some point. And here you can see I perfectly got it to stop on a line. If you don't, reverse time, go backwards in time, and then move it back out again and try pausing it another time. This time I made it worse. You don't want to make it worse. If you do, reverse and try again. Your goal is to try and get your first wave, the first wave that's created, to stop right on an easy to read line. Notice that each little block is worth a meter, so 10 of them equals 10 meters. So 10, 20, 30, 40. My wave, and it's important that you do the very first wave created because that's the one we're timing. My wave traveled exactly 40 meters in a time of 90 milliseconds. You'll notice that this one's saying 93 because this was my bad version. When I did the version that I had originally, I was able to stop it right on the 40 meter line. Boom, 90 milliseconds. Please don't use 90, please make sure you convert it over in the seconds. But that is how you're gonna find the speed of your wave. To get the wavelength of your wave, you pause it, you measure the distance between two adjacent waves, and that'll be your wavelength. To find the frequency, probably the easiest way is to use our new formula and use the velocity and the wavelength that you just determined and solve for frequency. Okay, so good luck. If you have any problems, come into McCulley 1 and ask me about them.